Good evening, everybody, and how are we all doing? This is a Sunday night veg grower podcast, live podcast, I guess we can call it. Uh, I will work out a decent name for it one day. Uh, it is Sunday, the 18th of December, 2022. Today, I want to find out, with Christmas literally just a week away, how much vegetables or how much food have you managed to grow for your Christmas dinner? Uh, phone lines are open. If you want to call in, let me just bring up the number so you know. It's 07307 135 174. Or you can zap in on the comments as well, which a link is going up right now. First of all, let's see who we've actually got in the comments. First of all, Turbo Stream is out there saying good evening, Fetch Podcasters. Good evening to you. Bally Cillian is saying good evening as well. Good evening to you, Bally Cillian. Uh, who else have we got? Um, Turbo Stream says it's slowly warming up here, but it's been a right miserable day. Complete contrast to yesterday, isn't it? Uh, Bally Cillian says, normally a cold doesn't bother me much, but I've been laid at, up at home in the last four days. Thankfully, feeling a lot better today. Glad to hear you are on the mend. Oracle is out there saying hello to the army and his friend Stuart Jackson. Good evening to you. Hargrave Gas, evening all. Match just finished in time. What a game. I didn't watch it, I'm afraid. Well, I haven't got a TV to watch it on, so... Uh, I'll have to take your 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 word on it. Uh, Anna Jones is out there saying evening gardeners. Good evening to you. Jenny Hallett is out there. Hello, everyone. I hope you've all had a great week. Good evening to you. Rebecca Hawkins is out there. Evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Chili Phil is out there. Evening all. Good evening to you. Stuart Jackson is over in the Facebook group saying evening, Richard and the Veg Army. Good evening to you. Chili Phil says Argentina won. That's a, uh, is that a, a shock or what? I don't know. Uh, Rebecca says, well, it's lovely to talk gardening. I have to say I've done no gardening whatsoever this week. Christmas has taken over. I think that's a common thing, to be fair. I don't think many people have done much gardening or gardening's not their uh, their main thing on their mind today. Um, crikey, we've got a first caller. Hello, caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Anybody there? Oh, I can hang on. I can just about hear you. Let me turn my phones up and see if that's any better. Hello, chicken lo mein and all our ribs. It's ready for you to pick up. Hello? What? This is the number you gave me for order. Your order has been ready for half an hour. What? No, no, please. No, no. This is the number you give me on the order. You need to pick order up. I don't know what you're talking about. We cannot deliver. I don't have a delivery. You have to come to Wong's Chinese restaurant. Right, okay. But don't order ever again. I give your number to all restaurants, not to accept from you. You are a terrible person. I don't call anybody on this phone, so... Oh, somebody, somebody's ordered a takeaway by the sounds of it. That's fun, isn't it? <laughs> um, that's a good start to the day. Kate Spratt is good evening, Veg Army. Good evening to you. Uh Somebody in the Facebook group is saying good evening. Good evening to you. Um, Idaho Gongo. Hello, everyone. Chili Phil, Rebecca, etc., etc. is out there. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, I think that is everybody. Let me just deal with, with that. Annette. Come on. Uh, Jenny Hallett says, is that it with the football now? Has it all finished? Good question. I think it has finished. I think it was the finals today. Um, <laughs> Kate is saying, what the hell? Yeah, I know. What the hell? It's a bit of fun. Bit of fun. That's <laughs> all I say. Um, right. Oh, trolls are back. Yeah, we deal with it. Don't worry. We deal with it. Facebook user, the only garden I've done is bring my lemongrass indoors as it is so cold in the greenhouse from Stuart. Yeah, it certainly has dropped, although it's been been warmed up, been warming up lately, so I've dealt with it. Um, uh, it's nice to get a bit of warmth, especially yesterday. Did you notice how warm it was yesterday after the week? It's it's getting better. Uh, Kerry is saying, been raining here all day today, and it's been very miserable. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. It's raining here at the moment as well. In fact, when I walked out to the shed, I thought the shed was going to float away like a boat. There's so much rain falling down out there. But, hey, it's all fun, all fun. 
Uh, Ian is out there saying, evening all, good evening to you. Dig well, is Joy being spammed already? No mods. Don't worry, we're dealing with it. We're dealing with it. We um, we might need to get some more mods. I don't know how we're going to do the phone, though. Jenny says, thank you, Chilly Phil. Good evening. Um, oh, that was about the football. Uh, Rebecca, hilarious, some prankers out there. Indeed. It makes it go fun, doesn't it, when that sort of thing happens? So um, let's get into the real crux of the show. Tell me what you have been growing uh, on your allotment, on your vegetable garden for your Christmas dinner. And what have you got that you're going to be able to produce for your Christmas dinner? Now, um, it's about a week away. It, it, well, it is a week away until we actually find out how successful everything is. And by that, what I mean is that I can see I've got Brussels sprouts and I've got cabbage. So I'm OK for those two. I'm pretty certain I've got some baby carrots when I dig up the ground to get the baby carrots out. They're still in the ground. Potatoes. I've got some in a pot. I don't know how they're going to be, but um, we'll find out when we tip them out. And leeks. I know we've definitely got leeks as well. So that's a few things that I know I have got that I've been successful with. But let me know what you have in there, in your allotments, in your gardens that you are know you're going to have. Uh, Digwell says, still cold yesterday, plus 11 degrees C today. It was warm here. It was warmer yesterday than it is today. Nice bright sunshine as well. But today we have just got this horrible rain come in, which is rather annoying. But uh, um, just just how we've got to work with it, haven't we? Uh, Richard Golden has joined. Good evening to you. Um, my dad has said good evening. Picture is spot on today, nice and clear. Good, good. It's I've moved the router to a different position as I was talking about earlier, so that's obviously worked. Um, uh, Ian McC McC McCraggan, I think I pronounced it. I have potatoes in pots and hope they've not frosted. Good point, actually. I didn't think about that with my potatoes. Fingers crossed when I pull them out. Um, they will be okay. I'm going to probably pour mine out on Friday or Saturday so I can still run to the shop and get some if I need to. But it's worrying. It's worrying. Uh, Turbo Stream, I hopefully have sprouts and parsnips on the plot. Plenty of beans in the freezer. Yes, that's um, something I forgot to mention. We've got plenty of beans and plenty of peas in the freezer, so we're going to be okay for that as well. Yes, um, parsnips. That's one I haven't been able to grow this year for various reasons. But next year, you never know. Um, potatoes, Brussels sprouts, carrots, parsnips, leek and cabbage you've managed to grow. Fantastic. That's a, I mean, that's a lot of food already, isn't it? I've, I've got to say, this is one of the things I love about Christmas. The amount of food that we can get away with actually eating. Um, it, it is a proper feast. And obviously, we've got the turkey. We've got the Brussels sprouts, which I love Brussels sprouts, by the way. We've got the cabbage. Uh, I mean, that's meat and two veg straight away there, but then we need roast potatoes. It's got to be roast potatoes for me. Got to be roast potatoes. I did try new potatoes one year. I much prefer roast potatoes. Um, Oracle says, looks like the Trolls is having a Chinese for fuck's sake. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Uh, we will be back to me spuds and brussels for us, Richard. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and what else have we got? What else have we got? Uh, Rebecca is saying they still have a frost. Idaho is saying, well, if I bring it up when it comes up, everything is frozen here. Uh, ah, we're back. Sorry, it suddenly dropped out there for a second. Everything is frozen here. If the ground is... Come on, don't play around with me today. Everything is frozen here. If it, the ground isn't too frozen, I might be able to dig some parsnips, but I will eat potatoes I dug a couple of months ago. That's a good thing about potatoes. I did think about digging mine out early and just storing them, but I wanted them right out the ground on Christmas Eve, really, just so I, I, I could be sure. I should have moved them into the greenhouse, my pots of potatoes, to be fair, but we learn for next year. Jenny says, carrots, herbs, fresh, lots in the freezer, hope to grow more next year. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Think about this year and trying to grow for next year as well and see what we can improve. One thing for next year I want to improve on is the parsnips because I did fail on those this year. 
one of my failures. And I'll, I'll hold my hands up about that. Uh, it certainly wasn't warm yesterday, being cloud and wet today. It was pretty warm here. It must have just been me here that was warm yesterday then. So uh, um, I'll count my lucky blessings. I've got to admit, I spent most of yesterday in bed. I've been out on Friday night for a work do, so uh, I didn't feel great yesterday, to be fair. Kerry says, potatoes, cabbage, kohlrabi. Good choice. And sprouts. Got carrots, but they aren't going to be big enough. Nothing wrong with baby carrots. There's nothing wrong with baby carrots at all. It's what I'm probably going to be doing with my carrots is just baby carrots. They don't need as much cooking time. Still with the skins on, bit of butter and sage. Absolutely beautiful. So uh, uh, nothing wrong with baby carrots, in my opinion. <laughs> Kerry says, got beans in the freezer too. I'm a big fan of using the freezers. I've said many times. Right. Let's see if this is another. There's no caller ID. Hello, caller. What's your name and where are you calling from? It's the Oracle. Hello, Oracle. How are you today? Um, I was going to say I was a bit better, but the blood started to show, Hummer. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I just phoned in to say, it's been terrible weather over here, so it has. Yeah. For a solid week there, it's been in the menaces, bad frost, everything. Yeah. I just wonder where everyone else is. He big whale says 11 degrees over there. I think it was 11 degrees where he was today. Now the, it's starting yeah. to warm up slightly, yeah. but uh, we've had a heavy frost all week here um, and very cold temperatures. In fact, Friday night when I was driving home, it was minus six, which I've never seen here before. All right. Uh, we, we, we've, had, we've had a hit hard bad here. I just wondering if everyone else was getting hit bad. Yeah, I'm, I think everyone has had it bad, but we'll throw it out there and see what everyone comes back with. I've got to say, I feel this has been here the coldest I've ever known it. The, the coldest coming up the Christmas I've had so far. Yeah. That way. It's usually after Christmas you get hit fast. Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, January, well, February. If I, don't, if I don't speak, I guess why I was phoning in to you doesn't give. Oh. He was there. Did he just disappear? There was a in the viewers. Sorry, can you say that again? You cut out there. So, sorry. Happy Christmas to yourself, Roxy and Amanda. Happy Christmas to you too. Yeah, um, and ha happy Christmas to all the viewers. Yep, happy Christmas to all the viewers as well. Thank you very much for yeah. that oracle. I said I said yeah, we Christmas card too, Richard, but I don't know if it's it's got over yet with the strikes. It hasn't yet, but with the Royal Mail at the moment and the strikes, I think there's a massive delay. No problem, and, th and thank you very much for your your time this year. It's been brilliant. Uh, you're most welcome. Looking forward to an successful next year. Oh, we'll carry on next year. Don't worry. You're most welcome. Thank you very much for your kind words. No problem. Go best, Richard. All the Go best. best son. You take care, buddy. Bye. 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 There we go. That was uh, Oracle wishing us all a very happy Christmas indeed. Uh, Digwell, the only veg I am worried about are the second cropping spuds in buckets, frozen solid, but low again. So are the fronts in my freezer. I hope they are frozen in your freezer, uh, uh, Digwell. Um it's what it's what the freezer is meant to do. Uh, Ian says, is that one of your hoodies? I must get mine out as so warm. Yes, it is one of my hoodies. It is very warm. I, I, I'm wearing it a lot at the moment, especially when I do this live show. I must produce a few more at some point. I've got, I'm coming up with some nice logos and stuff. Uh, my organic haggis did well this year. Perhaps you could include the seeds next year, Richard. Mm, I do enjoy haggis. I do enjoy haggis. Uh, Chili Kate says, we've got main crop potatoes left from the main harvest and carrots, parsnips and swede on the plot. Sadly, we got to the allotment too late for sprouts. Yeah, sprouts do need quite a bit of time, but I think they're worth it. I mean, we've got quite a few sprouts. The one thing, I, I, I well, two things I wish I had done better with, parsnips and swede, because I failed on both of those counts. Uh, they're two things I wish I'd done more of. Hopefully next year. Uh, Chili Kate, just hoping that the veg on the plot is okay after this intense cold, aren't we all? Aren't we all? I've not, I mean, I've looked at my celery that's outside and my my mustard and my Swiss chard that's still outside. Although I covered them, they're not looking too great, but we will see uh, just what happens. Um, uh, Oracle says, sorry, Richard, that was my fault. No problem. Digwell says, you can't blame the weather on the video being frozen. I hope it's not frozen now. Um, 
it will see. We'll see. Minus 10 overnight. Nothing left to dig up, says Ian Breddows. Minus 10. That's cold, isn't it? That's that's getting down to freezer temperature. Minus 10. I mean, minus six was quite shocking for here. Um <laughs> We had snow in Foxfield, Hampshire all week as frost made it stay. So cold, minus five, it stopped my battery hedge cutters from working. That's scary, isn't it? Very, very cold when it gets to that temperature and it, it stops your batteries from working. I bet there's a lot of cars that haven't been working as well for the same reason. Stuart, I think this is Stuart anyway. Minus eight yesterday, probably plus eight today. All I have for our Christmas lunch is carrots and broad beans. Uh, it's something at least. At least it's something. Uh, Jenny forgot about her sweet potatoes. Lovely, lovely. I must grow sweet potatoes next year because I really did enjoy growing those. There is a knack to them, but I do like growing sweet potatoes. Uh, Toby Stream saying some, some supermarkets are doing their 19p veg from today, so any failures can be brought. That's exactly right. That's what I always fall back onto. You know, I always try and make sure we've got vegetables for Christmas dinner. And most of the time I am lucky, but if we have to fall back onto to these 19p vegetables, we will. I mean, uh, we've got plenty of butternut squashes, so we're not going to be low on butternut squashes either. So, um, and plenty, what else have we got? Plenty, um, plenty of Oh, I can't think. Can't think what else we've got plenty of. The butternut squashes is definitely one we've got plenty of. But I'm just trying to keep. I don't know if anybody's done an experiment. See how long they can keep a squash for, just leaving it inside the um, inside a uh, on on a worktop or something, or inside their stores. I know they were winter veg, but I'm running an experiment to see just how long one butternut squash will last. Um. Digwell says minus 13 a few days ago, plus 11C today. It's pretty shocking the temperature at this time of year, isn't it? I know it's always can be a bit of a a different, uh, a cold time of year, but this year has been incredibly cold. Um, 24 degree difference in three days. Yeah, makes all the difference, doesn't it? Uh, Stuart says the lowest temperature we had this week was minus 12. That's cold. That is cold. Uh, not just Green Fingers UK blog. Even in all, potatoes, roasted celeriac, parsnips, butternuts and cauliflowers, beans and kale. Suddenly my Brussels are rubbish this year. It's hit by white fly badly. Happy Christmas, everyone. Love, Lisa. Indeed, indeed. Um, the only blessing with the cold weather is the bugs in the ground will be getting it rough, slugs, etc. Yep, that's, that is true. Anne Osborne has joined. Hello, everyone. Good evening to you, Anne. Lovely to see you. Um, uh, Adrian saying sorry for missing the spam. Don't worry, we dealt with it. Uh, Turbo Stream. I was interested to see a few seaside YouTubers posting how cold it's been this year. It's been the second coldest December in hundred years. It really has been a weird drop in temperatures. Certainly temperatures that I've never seen before here. And I mean, it's got to the point. I'm normally pretty hardy. I class myself, or I would describe myself. I can, I can tolerate cold weather quite well. And I usually am in in the middle of winter, just in a t-shirt. Um, last few years, I find myself trying to wrap up a bit more. But this week, I've even had to put undercut clothes on. So I had like a, um, um, well, for want of a better word, long johns and. Um, a base layers just to keep myself a little bit warmer. It makes a hell of a difference, I've got to say. Extra layers do really make a hell of a difference. Digwell says, my postie says the delays are minimal as they are working Sunday overtime to clear the backlog. Uh, a bit ironic. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've, I, I know post has been slow for obvious reasons. So, yeah. Um. Rebecca says, I'm letting Mother Nature look after my garden right now and I shall be back when it needs me. I I kind of agree. I kind of agree. I'm, I mean, I spent a bit of time this weekend sorting through my tools and getting the tools all ready for next year. And that's been a big thing. But I can do that indoors. And that's the good thing about when it's cold is that it pushes me indoors to do things indoors. Um, Turbo Stream says haggis can grow on trees. Oh, I've seen wild haggis. I've seen wild haggis when I was in Scotland. Um, they run around all over the place. 
Uh, Jenny Hullett, we've had minus 12. Barrel Pond has frozen solid. Backdoor frozen. Took ages to get outside. Boiler playing out, which is typical. Yeah, I've heard of a lot of people having trouble with their boilers. Um, yeah. Uh, Kerry says, I still have a pumpkin. LOL. Fantastic. You're going to use that pumpkin on Christmas Day as well. Um, what are you going to do with pumpkin for Christmas Day? Um, I'm trying to think of ideas for our butternut squash for Christmas. Um, da, 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 da. Hadrian says, I have a lot of stinging nettles. Can I have a lot of stinging nettles? Can they be used on Christmas Day? You can make nettle soup. Probably best with the younger nettles, but it, I, I still think even then it will be okay. Um, Jenny says, kept a squash till the following spring. Yeah, I can believe that. I know, like, when I keep shallots, I find they last longer than onions, and I've kept them for 18 months before, so... I want to see just how far I can push it with squash. Um, Hargrave says, uh, I didn't plan very well, but my veg contribution for Christmas dinner will be butternut squash and pumpkin from the Veg Ground Podcast seeds. Indeed, yes. Uh, so lots of lots of little things going on there. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Now, first of all, I've got a few videos that have been sent in this week. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do the photos first. These are photos that have been posted in the Facebook group. I'm changing things up slightly. So um, let's see if this works out. There we go. That was a photo. There's a bit of an abrupt ending now, I've just realised. But I'm just trying to tweak things around to see if we can uh, make the photos a little bit more different so I can also get a break and get, get my a drink in while something is going on as well. Um, but nice lot of photos. I really liked Kate's Christmas decoration right there. I'm going to look at getting one for myself because I think that is um, a genius thing. Uh, what, what have we got? What have we got? Um, Amy's allotments joined. Hello, all good. Uh, Amir's allotment. Sorry, hello, all good evening to you. Hope you are well. Uh, what have we got? Turbo Stream says, I cubed a butternut squash yesterday. The rest is in the freezer now. Fantastic. Uh, Stuart says, His watering cans and water butts were all solid ice this week. Yeah, mine were. I've never seen that. I had a good few inches of ice in, in everything. It's amazing. Uh, Ian says, Long John's Richard, you were getting old. I know, I couldn't believe I had to buy some, but boy, were they worth it. They were fantastic to wear. Um, Toby Stream, I haven't been to the plot for a week now. We'll go in the next couple of days. Yeah, it, it is that time of year when we don't tend to go to our allotments so much. Ian Meadows, you can coach me on winter veg next year, as we'll miss most of planting for summer. Off to Spain for two months. Luckily, Peter is here. To look after the cat. Well, that actually is something where I feel this conversation is going. We're talking about our Christmas dinner veg. And what I want to find out is when did everybody start sowing their seeds for the Christmas dinner veg? Obviously, Brussels sprouts, I think I started mine February, March time. Um, carrots were quite late, June, July time. Parsnips, I tried March, April time, but they failed. Um, trying to remember what else I've done. Um, but let, let us know in the comments what you've done what when you start growing your seeds uh, i leave my dahlias in the ground with compost on top and buckets on top of the compost they will always survive but not sure this year fingers crossed fingers crossed is all i can say it's all we can do is just cross our fingers and hope the best mother nature has thrown this out to us this year this cold weather we've just got to hope that our plants have survived it has been for me this has been the coldest i've ever known it. i think i've said that already but we are uh, it gave me a, for me it's been a good chance to really experiment and see if our techniques work such as throwing enviromesh mulching straw etc etc really wanted to see just how much we can keep our plants going this year with this cold weather bally Cillian says richard do a video next year on sweet potatoes i've tried for years and never got a crop can't figure out what i'm doing wrong okay i can do that um 
what I found when I grew sweet potatoes, I brought the slips in. I didn't try growing the slips, but I brought the slips in. I put them in the ground with plenty of well-rotted manure and compost. They're very, very hungry, very thirsty plants. You really want to try and get the, the foliage to grow up ideally keep them off the ground um, and then leave them in the ground until the frosts come along and the foliage goes this real black dark color and that's when you know it is a good time to harvest them uh, that's what i found when i grew them and i got pretty decent results the hardest thing about them is keeping them weed free jenny says we are making a curried squash soup for over the christmas week fantastic that's another question i want to ask what dishes are you making from your homegrown veg um i'll be uh like my brussels sprouts i always add bacon into my brussels sprouts so i'll quickly parboil the brussels sprouts um chop up some bacon and fry the bacon off in a frying pan, then add the sprouts to the to the, the pan of bacon, coat them the sprouts in that lovely bacony flavour, and then pop that on the table. That's what I do with sprouts, and I love it every year. Ian says, I have potatoes, carrots, and runner beans, plus in the ground kale and parsnips. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Toby Stream, the old podcast tune. Yeah, I, I was trying to find a deep white music in a... That just seemed to fit quite nicely. A lot mental says, Oi, oi, indeed. How you doing, my friend? Uh, excuse me. Butternut squash is lovely, roasted with onions and peppers. Coat in olive oil, add a couple of sausages, and stir in a bit of gravy at the end. Mm. Yes, absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. I use wet weather lagging over my jeans as it stops the dirt from and keeps you warm and dry when lined. Yeah, I, I used to use those sort of things on my motorbike in the old days as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> Digwell says, the coldest I've been is minus 20 in the Falklands. Had to weld up a jetty for a landing. Metal too cold to weld, so two guys had to preheat with oxy acetylene torches. Brr. Yeah. I know how minus 20 feels. I've been in that temperature far too many times. Uh, Anne has joined. Sorry I'm late, sir. Hello from a sunny and snowy Montreal. No problem. Uh, lovely to see you. I haven't shown you a video yet, so uh, that's something to look forward to. Rebecca, I bet it's a shock, such a shock for you Southerners. We get a good frost most year. It is a shock. I've got to admit, it is a shock. Um, I really have not experienced this sort of temperature before. So um, interesting. It's, as I said, it's an interesting discovery for me. March and April are my sowing months and tend to do two batches of each and succession sow where I can. Is that everything you sow in March and April? I mean, cabbages, again, I try and sow March, April time as well, probably May, uh, ready for Christmas dinner. Um, I do like a red cabbage on Christmas, I've got to say. I've got to say. Um, add Swede mash to the Christmas dinner list managed to grow a few this year so how do you make swede mash i've got my own ideas on how we make it here but i want to find out how you guys make it as well for me what i do is i take some swede we'll steam it in our steamer and then i'll mash it with a bit of milk and a bit of nutmeg and i enjoy that well that's what i find anyway i don't know about you guys um, again everyone has their own recipes that i want to find out a bit more about Jenny Fields says, Southerner still in shorts here. We're not all soft. Um, there's always one. There's always one person that is in shorts, even when it's snowing, isn't it? There's always one. And Jenny Fields is obviously that one. Uh, I couldn't do it. I mean, I don't wear shorts in summer anyway. So uh, I'm definitely not in winter. Um, now... <laughs> I think Digwell mentioned his second sowing of spuds, and I think they are the new potatoes he was talking about. I know it's possible if we sow new potatoes July, August time, we can get a crop of new potatoes for the Christmas table. And it was a bit of a, a thing to do a couple of years ago. And I tried it once, but and it was successful. I won't say it wasn't successful. It was very successful. But um, I don't do it anymore. And the reason being is that I enjoy my Christmas dinner to have roast potatoes, those nice crispy skins on the outside with fluffy potato on the middle, cooked in goose fat and a bit of sometimes marmite for a bit of flavouring. I absolutely love my roast potatoes. Um, 
I tend to do mine in the air fryer as well because they get them really nice and crispy with the right oil and with the right amount of time. Um, so over, uh, let me know what you think on that subject. New potatoes or roast potatoes for your Christmas dinner? Ian says, get a Sweden stamp on it to make it mash. <laughs> That's a good one. Nicholas joined. Hello, all. Sorry I'm late. No problem. Lovely to see you. Uh, our mash is sweet, carrot and parsnip mashed together. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds very, very nice. Uh, Chili Kate says, boil the sweet in a little water and butter with lots of salt and pepper and a little nutmeg. Cook until soft and the water has evaporated. Oh, lovely. Lovely, diably. Turbo stream. We always get frosts here. My mostly minus five in at least most years. Not really worth starting seeds till mid-April, as we can still get a frost till early May. I'm gonna say I always still go on the assumption we can get a frost till middle of May. So I don't aim to get any of my non-hardy plants out until middle of May anyway. But um I know what, I've, I've seen people plant out, and it annoys me when this happens. They've gone to a garden centre in March, I think it was, it's Sunday on the allotment, and they went and brought a load of plants, new to the allotment game, and they planted them straight out. And of course, frost came along and killed a lot of them. They never came back. A shame, a shame. Digwell says, I still have five buckets of main crops to tip out. Excellent. I've got two, which I'm saved for my Christmas dinner. Hopefully, they're going to be okay. Jenny says, I say most months of the year, but March and April is my big sow time, depending on the varieties, etc., etc. Uh, yeah, um, again, when it comes to sowing times, I mean, it, it's good to plan ahead, I feel, with Christmas dinner. I roast main crop, steam new potatoes for the Christmas meal. Yep, good idea, good idea. Again, I've done the, the new potatoes one year with the roast potatoes, and the new potatoes just weren't eaten as much. There's only me and my wife and the wife's mum again, so there's only three of us. Uh, it's got to be roast potatoes and mashed potatoes on Christmas Day for us, says Lisa. Chris mashed potatoes for Christmas dinner. I never thought of doing that. That might be an idea one year. I like that. Ian is asking, are we doing a Christmas quiz this year? Yes, we're doing a Christmas quiz next Sunday on Christmas Day from 6 o'clock. I'm going to be sending an email to the, the people who have said they would... Um, or, yeah, send an email out this evening to the people who said they're going to be uh, asking a question that I've, uh, on a video for me to play in next week, just to uh, mix things up. So uh, if anybody else is prepared to record a video asking a question, let us know. Send me a message at the end of this show and I'll send you over a question. Just record a video and send it over to me um, this week and that'll be cool. Turbo stream. I make sweet sweet mash 50-50 with potatoes, butter, and milk. Add a bit of parsley in with it too sometimes. Oh, parsley. Um, I've got a bit. I've still got parsley and coriander growing in my veggie pod. So herbs, we're fine. We're sorted for herbs. Rebecca says, I normally start my sweet peas the day after Boxing Day. So looking forward to a spot of gardening over Christmas. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? I think... And the trouble when you know you've got a period off is that you tend to save all those jobs for that time thing. And you've got all the time in the world. And I, I, I find myself in that trap of doing it. This year, I'm like, no, I, I'm, I'm going to crack on with still the usual amount of jobs that I can do in the meantime. Uh, Stuart says, I mainly start sowing in March, April, but try to sow something every month as part of the Supporters Club, of course. He's a, a, a very valued member, as all members are of the Supporters Club, that uh, I run to in order to support the podcast and this live stream. Uh, Turbo stream, I will continue to mostly outdoor sowing. They always catch up with the indoor sowing ones. It's a fair point. It's a fair point. This is always a question. Uh, um, always a question that, I, I, we wonder as well, do outdoor sowing ca catch up as quick as their indoor sowing or do they produce as good results? It's something we're going to experiment actually next year and just see what um, what happens. Right, at this point, I just want to remind everybody, if you are enjoying this live show, hopefully the picture is still coming in crisp and clear. I'm keeping an eye on the signal, which is bouncing all over the place. But if you are enjoying this live show, please do give us a thumbs up, a like. Uh, if you're not subscribed or following us, then please do. And don't forget to click the notifications so that you know 
when we go live. Um, I do need to say that every time. I forgot to do it. I think it was last week or the week before, and I got a telling off again from both YouTube and Facebook for not saying it. I think I might sneeze in a minute just to warn everyone. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Ed no Andrew Norris has joined. Evening, everyone. Got distracted. Have been out on the street to welcome the Croatian team back from Qatar. Extraordinary atmosphere. Good to be here with you all now. I bet. What um, what what a what amazing thing. Um, I'm not. I don't. I don't follow football, so I don't quite know where everything happens. So apologies for that. Um, I so Digwell agrees with Turbo Stream. Why do we bother with trying to push nature? So this is about sowing seeds indoors and uh, or outdoors. The only thing I would say when it comes to things like aubergines or sweet peppers and chili peppers. I feel <laughs> I, I feel it's good to definitely get those. They need a long growing season, so it is always worth getting those going um, ready and in advance. Digwell says, anyone got a flannel? I need to wipe my face. That was after me sneezing. I gave you a warning. I did give you a warning. A lot of mental supermarkets have the cheap Xmas bed in stock. I've seen that. I mean, it is pretty cheap, isn't it? 19p for all the vegetables you really need. Um, my only thing I would say that, and I'm comparing this to our homegrown vegetables, is they don't taste as good as what we grow at home. So I'm still a much uh, a much bigger fan of our homegrown veg. And I'm sure many of you are as well. Um, tomatoes sown around May as they always catch up. Yeah, I mean, I like to do my early ones for the greenhouse um, because the greenhouse, you do get slightly earlier growing times in. But that's, a uh, yeah, I, I, a lot of people, I think, are, especially this year where we're not using heated propagators and uh, things that give us that little boost, shall we say. I think a lot of people this year are not growing stuff inside the um uh, in, indoors so they are going to be using things like um I, I completely lost my train of thought they are going to be sowing much later and hoping that they will do just as well uh turbo stream agrees with dig well the only problem is out outdoor is the slugs yep um rebecca says have i had too many snowballs or have you gone a bit blurry richard possibly the signal has dropped slightly um, I'm not going to start fiddling around because I don't want to lose connection completely. So um, we'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully it'll boost back. Um, Digwell says the non-native veg needed to start early, but why bother with UK ones? Something I am looking at. It's, it's going to be an interesting experiment, actually, Digwell. I think this is something perhaps, perhaps as a, a group, you know, we've, we've talked about challenges for 2023. We're doing the melon challenge, which we'll get into um, in, on New Year's Day when we go live. We're going to get the, the melon challenge. We're going to be doing uh, perhaps as a group. Everyone tries this. Try growing tomatoes, um, start them off early and straight outside or things like that. We'll, we'll figure something out together for 2023 on challenges and experiments we can do as a group. Uh, Bally soon says, I like sowing in, be indoors because you're planting a mature seed and now helps in a slug war. That's a good question. Uh, and Digwell says to Jenny, no worries about legginess. Uh, what did Jenny say? I'll buy, oh yeah, tomatoes, yeah. Uh, in says, if you can get lots of fresh horse manure, you could make a hotbed to grow seeds on. This is something I'm going to be doing, actually. I just can't find somewhere to get fresh horse manure from so I can make my own hotbed. I'm thinking of just using um, compost clippings if I can't get any fresh horse manure. Um, but, yeah, and he goes on to say the shark's fin melon. Ian, I, I will have to pop down in the next few weeks and we'll have a discussion about the shark's fin melon and uh, see how we can get on. Turbo stream. I now outdoor say beetroot, parsnips, French beans, boiled beans direct in their final position. Yeah, I mean, I, I do tend to do broad beans directly outside now. I don't 
bother with indoors so no i've got some indoors in the greenhouse just in case uh rebecca says have you got stables near you i probably have uh, in fact i know i have but whether they do the fresh stuff or not is the big question it's, um i wonder if i wonder if cow manure would work as well um I'm sure it would. I'm sure it would. I've been looking out a lot into hotbeds lately as a way of, of heating everything up. Right. Shall we have a look? Uh, Anne in Canada she sent me a, a, a lovely video. This is a plot tour of her place in Canada. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's covered in snow. So this is going back a few months. But I think it's still a lovely thing to see. So let's have a quick look at this. Peace. Lots and lots of greenery, sunflowers, not a lot of peas yet. Carrots, these are looking good. I did have a little look at one. Look, you can see his little round, he's gonna be a dark one. Exciting. Cabbage and whatnot living in there. Uh, beets, golden, uh, touchstone gold. I just picked one of those yesterday. It's so pretty. Cutting garden. Like it says on the tin. Dwarf sunflowers and cosmos. A little zinnia in there. I've been grateful for the orange cosmos this year. Tomatoes everywhere. Dragon egg cucumbers. Growing in there. This is an amazing wild bee balm that attracts lots of bees. Grow it from seed, and um, it's just this enormous, gorgeous bush of flower. Uh, yard long beans on the bean arch, which haven't produced anything yet. Uh, some salads, salad leaves, broad beans in August. I mean, it's just crazy. Squash dome. I'm getting um, Ron Denise courgettes and hopefully some delicatus. And the blue hubbard is climbing up. Yeah. Potatoes everywhere. Growing well, producing the little poisonous fruits on the top after they've flowered, as they do. Strawberry bushes. Not prolific, but okay. More potatoes. Um, oh yeah, I love this. This is a queen lime zinnia. Love it. Pretty. Yeah. Oh, and there's courgettes over in that far thing. And um, this is peas and beans. I'm getting some little orange uh, too. In the sunshine. So happy gardening. Fantastic. What a great little video that was. Lovely to see. I mean, I know it's going back a few months, but lovely to see a lot of colour and, and uh, things going on in a garden back then, isn't it? Um, yeah, absolutely lovely. Thank you so much. Please, everybody, feel free to send in any video, as long as it's garden related, particularly veg gardening. We'd love to see it. We can play them in. Um, the only request I do have, if you can, it's not a huge problem if you can't, but I do request that they are filmed in 720 um, just because of restrictions with uploading and stuff. But if you don't understand what that means, don't worry, just shoot your video, send it to me, and I'll sort it out my end. Uh, Lisa says, I grew a shark fin melon a few years ago, and it was a monster plant that burst the arch. I grew it up, and it tasted horrible. I did wonder about the taste. I'm, I'm kind of intrigued about this. We've spoke about this a while ago, um, but we'll, we'll find out. Uh, Jenny says, cow manure and urine is excellent for hot bedding. That's what I wondered. Um, I just want to 
if I can get a supplier, because I did wonder about just using normal compost material chopped up really small just to try and get this hotbed built. Uh, Ian is saying, great video to Anne. Absolutely. And Kate is saying, well, amazing video. All looks incredible. Gorgeous. Zinnia, weren't they beautiful? Absolutely lovely. Uh, Anne says, lovely garden. Digwell says, lovely garden. Indeed. Uh, Tommy, a lovely pot and a reminder of summer days to come. Something to look forward to, isn't it? In those dreary cold days. Uh, lovely plot and good to have a reminder of warmer days. Absolutely. Uh, Andrew, that was really impressive. Lovely to see how others work their plot. Indeed, this is what it's all about. See how others work their plot and get some ideas for ourselves. Digwell says, OMG, some said shark fin melon. Yep, we're going to try it next year. If if Ian is going to be brave enough to let me grow it in his field, it will take over his field, but I think it's going to be an interesting one to try. Um, Rebecca says, such a nice plot. Absolutely beautiful pot. And Stuart says, a great video. Fantastic. Yeah, great video indeed. We've got one more video coming up a little bit later on, so stand by for that. That one's from Turbo Stream, and it's a few photos together from the last year. Something I'm hoping we're going to be trying to do next year a little bit better. Now, I'm, I've got another question I want to ask you guys. We've 2023 just around the corner as well, two weeks away, and we're into the new year. Um, what I want to know, is anybody planning to go to any garden shows next year? Um, and what days will you be going? I'm trying to work out, I've had a bit of a meeting and a discussion with uh, the last week, and we're working out what shows we're going to go to, what days and everything, work it around when we're on call or when I'm on call, I should say, etc. etc. But I thought I'd throw it out to see what days and you guys are going, what shows you're going to. Um, I know some of us are going to media events that we're going to as well, which is slightly different, but uh, anybody who's going to those, that'd be good to see as well. Uh, Ian says, Yes, let's do it. Growing the shark's fin melon in his field. Have you actually seen how big it gets, Ian? That's as I said before, just want to make sure you're aware it is a bit of a more monster. Rebecca says, Definitely Gardener's World. Yep, I think I'm definitely going to that. What day are you going to be there? The only days I won't be at any shows is Sundays, obviously, because I have to do this live show. Um, and if I'm on call, I've got to work it around that. Turbo Stream says, I might try Malvern this year. Good idea. Uh, Malvern is good. That's one on our list as well that we're, we're thinking of going to. Um, Digwell says, I'm doing Malvern Spring on the Sunday. Um, I think I don't think I'll be there on the Sunday. I don't think. And uh, BBC Gardeners World live on the Thursday. I can't remember what day I'm going to Gardeners World, but we'll we'll put this thing out. Um, I spotted a chili show in Chichester in a park. I think I saw that actually. I've got a. I did see an advert for that. I think chili and cheese show wasn't it or something. So I probably will be going to that. It won't be as good as the one. Um, I went to at that garden west dean that's it that's it rebecca says i normally go on thursdays it'd probably be a thursday when i go as well because i'm thinking of going on the wednesday for the, the media side but we'll see uh nicola says lovely plot i tried growing lime green zinnias but none of the scenes came up i cannot help you i've never tried growing zinnias because they're flowers um but we'll see um turbo stream says i like gardeners world because i met i met um turbo stream at gardeners world last year uh it was quite expensive i thought it, it is but i feel it's a good show because of the the size and breadth of everything it's a good location i mean they've got the spring show in Bewley, which i'm going to go to as well if i'm not on call which i think i'm not um and then they've got another one, the autumn one, that I'm probably going to go to as well, which is that Audley End House, which is, I think it's an Audley End House again, Essex. Uh, another, Saffron Warden, that is. Another good one. Um, Facebook, you, uh, Stuart says, I'm not sure about Malvern in the spring as the prices have gone up by £5 per day, says Stuart. Inflation, everything's going up. Everything is going up at the moment. And if they've got to, got to cover their costs, then... Yeah. 
The chili cake says, I saw the ads for the chili show, but nothing will ever be like Chili Fiesta at West Dean. I totally agree. Totally agree. I think that was a big mistake then cancelling Chili Fiesta uh, at West Dean. If anybody hasn't heard about the Chili Fiesta at West Dean, it was the biggest and longest running chili show in the UK. Everything there was chili themed, be it chili clothes, chili cheese. And it wasn't about the heat, it was more about the flavour. But there was free lawns. It was absolutely fantastic. But they, um, a new gardener took over and didn't feel it fitted in quite right. And uh, I think that was a bit of a mistake, but I'm not in charge. Uh, Ian says, are you going to the Gardener's World Show in the New Forest? And no, I've not seen how big shark fins get, but I have a tractor flail or mower if needed. Um, I have seen the one in the New Forest. I went to it in the last couple of years. That's at Bewley. And I'm pretty sure I'll be going to that again next year. Um, we'll, have a, we'll have a discussion here when I come down and see you about this Sharks Fin Melon, just so you know just how big it gets and that you, what you're letting yourself in for. It's going to be fun, don't get me wrong. Um, but the, the, it'll be, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, Love Garden as well. I was asked to leave as they were closing. Yeah, it does get like that. Um, I mean, I find I have to spend two days there now just so I can really get, obviously I'm working at the same time, but to get around everything, including, as Digwell says, uh, the BBC Good Food Show as well was much better. Uh, to try and get around everything, I have to spend at least two days there just trying to get the interviews done, get the, the, the whole thing, photos, et cetera, et cetera. But it is, I think it's a good show. I really do, because it's such a broad range of everything gardening. Nicholas says, I'm hoping to do a garden show more. Now I don't have a dog. May take van and use as a camper van. I went to Gardeners World Live a few years back. Want to go to some this year coming. That's why I'm asking. I want to find out what, what shows everyone's going to. So far, Marvin and Gardeners World seems to be uh, the, the, the top ones. Ian says, Westine used to do a garden show and that went to the wall as well. Yeah, doesn't surprise me. Uh, Turbo Stream, years ago I went to Tatton Park with my late allotment friend. Not sure if that's still going. I think, is that an RHS? Because they cut down the amount of RHS shows they do. And I think Tatton, because they did one in Cardiff I was going to go to, but they cut that one. Um, big shame. Turbo Stream, I would prefer more, more veg plot at these shows, though. I do agree with you there. I do totally agree. I would like to see more veg plots at these shows but that's generally where the autumn shows come in because they are generally more veg orientated because that's when the harvester comes in uh i'm like nicola i don't like leaving our dog yeah i'm with you on that i'm with you on that um since i got my dog i've, I've realized just how restricting it is but luckily amanda will be here and looking after her as well but uh it, it, it's difficult leaving your dog behind, isn't it? Even if it's just for a night. I find it really hard, I've got to say. Um, but, yeah, that's my only restriction. What about some of the RHS shows? Anybody going to uh, Chelsea or ha Hampton Court or anything like that? Or what about local garden shows? Anybody going to any local garden shows? Or have you not thought about it yet? Are you just seeing what happens and winging it? Um I mean, the main reason I'm asking is because I want to know when to book tickets for to try and see some of you guys as well. Um, but I've got to fit it in with my um, around my work. Um, let us know. Let us know. I'm just going to, if anybody wants to zap in, which one's the zap in one? Uh, that one. Anybody wants to zap in, the link is going up in the comments right now. Uh, if you want to zap in, or if you want to call in 07307 135 174, and I'm sure you won't be the Chinese restaurant calling me to, to collect our order that I haven't ordered. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Ian says, I don't like leaving my cat for the day, so no holidays for me. I'm with you. I'm with you. I don't, I mean, I was always difficult leaving my chickens when we went on holiday, but the dog has really done it for me. Rebecca says, I'd love to go to Chelsea again. It was my first time this year, an amazing weekend. I'd love to go to Chelsea. Um, I know I'm not allowed to go there as a broadcaster because the BBC has rights, but uh, hopefully, 
hopefully I might be able to angle something. Uh, Jenny says, I'm hoping that our more local allotment open days, COVID put a stop to some and I missed them. I did Chelsea last year, loved it, but so expensive. Allotment open days, that's a good point. Very good point, actually. Um, actually, I've got, got to email somebody, um, village I grew up in. They put a message out, they're thinking of starting a community garden um, and looking for some, if people would be interested. I've got to email them, sort of show a, uh, an interest in it. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I think if I go to Garners World again, I will do more of the special growers as I missed out that section last year. It is a big show. What I recommend, if you go to Garners World and you're only going for the day, have a look beforehand because I think they publish things on their website and give you an idea of the map and try and get a plan together of what you want to see, what you want to go and, and um, take take time and look at. It is very busy. Um but it, I do think it is a good show. I, I do think it is a good show. Digwa says, as much as I love the show gardens at BBC, to be honest, who is going to or who can afford to change their garden around? As, and as mentioned, very few veggies. I'm with you on the veggies. I'm with you on the veggies. I've, I've, um, I've wanted to do my own sort of show purely on veggies. It will never happen. Well, it's unlikely to ever happen because of obvious restrictions but it's definitely something i feel would be good to have a show solely dedicated to veggies that being said veggies sorry veggies veggies that being said i have noticed that gardeners world spring and at um the, the one in birmingham they do do a big vegetable garden usually run by the allotment committee um so that's something to they, they do have that, but it's it's usually run by the allotment committee or the Veg Growers Society, whatever they call themselves. Uh, been to Chelsea once, we had a showgun, but never again to the showgun as too much stress, also a bit pricey. Yeah, I did see the price of Chelsea. It's a bit expensive, but I feel I've got to go just the once, just to say I've been. Anne says, what dates are the shows? I cannot remember off the top of my head. Um, I think Gardeners World in Birmingham, uh, yeah, Gardeners World in Birmingham is June, July time. It's a week before the 10-year anniversary of the VegGrab podcast. I know that. The one at Bewley is the 29th of April, that weekend. So remember that because I'm on call that weekend, so I've got to figure something out for that. Um, um, I cannot remember when Malvern. I think it's May, if I remember correctly. Uh, Lisa says, love allotment open days. There's so many things you can learn from our dirt plots. I agree. I agree. Um, we used to have one at our site, but I don't think they do it anymore. Rebecca says, I've never been to Malvern, so would also like to do that. I've been to Malvern once. Um, it's a very good one, I've got to say. I really enjoyed it. It's on par with Gardner's World for size. The only thing that is a little bit tricky for me, I think it's about Four, three, four hour drive there, if I remember correctly. Um, it was a long day. I remember that much. But luckily, I've got a camper van now, so it makes it a bit easier. Turbo Stream, I wonder if going to other local allotment days would be of more interest to us veg growers than a big flower show. You hear a key word there, flower show. Often they are flower shows. Like Chelsea is a flower show. Hampton Court is a flower show, if I remember correctly. Gardner's World is a gardener show. Um, so... Uh, We'll, we'll do all that. Uh, right. Uh, sorry, just dealing with something there. Um, Ian says, sounds like we need a group meet on up on my field to cut back the shark's fin melon. Well, we did talk about doing a group meet this year, but it just um, didn't give much interest when I, I set a date or anything. So that's something we can look at doing again. Look at for next year. We'll, we'll get into that. In this in um, 2023, um, Digwell says same here to Turbo Stream. That felt what I'm not sure, uh, but I also I am also restricted on train times. Yeah, Garner's World is the 15th to the 18th of June. For who was asking, uh, Malvern is the second week in May. I thought it was, um, so and was was there asking about those. Uh, 
Nicholas says, I'm planning to go to Chelsea in 2024 for my 60th. Where's the time gone? Well, there's still plenty of time ahead of you, so don't worry. But Chelsea, yeah. Chelsea, I think, is one I've got to go to one year. Kerry, would love to go to some of them, but I just can't afford to go, if I'm honest. I know it's very – they. I think they can be quite expensive, but I get it at the same point. Um, it's a very – for me, when I like – when I've talked about Gardner's World, the only thing that I – I find difficult to talk about is the price of it because I do think it is expensive, but then I've got to remember the prices that are set by them. And sometimes I get told off when I think things are too expensive, and even though I'm, I like the product, but that's sometimes because I'm a bit of a stingy art person. And says, I would much prefer a veggie show. Yeah, I really, I, I would. I think we used to have the edible garden show, which was really good because it was all about edible gardening. Unfortunately, it wasn't a success, I don't think, and it had to close down. It went for three, four years. It went to Alice, Alexander Palace, which is lovely, but just hasn't pulled it through. Uh, Malvern is the 11th to the 14th of May, and Malvern Autumn Show has more veggies than a spring show, says Stuart. That's what I thought. Uh, Ian says veggie show would now be a winner for sure. I agree. I agree. It's just... They don't do many veggie shows anymore. As I say, Edible Garden Shen Show was a good one, but it just it wasn't successful enough. And Anna says, I love the student veg gardens at Q on TV. Always full of good ideas. I haven't been to Q for a few years now, but I love the veg gardens there, the student veg gardens. They were absolutely beautiful. Uh, Malvern Autumn is the 22nd to the 24th of September. The winds just blew quite strong there. Uh, Turbo Stream. The big shows are ideal if you are interested in looking at products, e.g. E veggie pods, etc., etc. I agree. I agree. I mean, I've been to some of the smaller shows. There's one I went to. Uh, I've probably said about this before. One show I went to, it's going to stay anonymous, but the reason that I... For reasons that will become apparent. When I was there, and I've been to it twice, and I got the same vibe every year. Yes, there was gardening bits and pieces, but there were also non-garden-related things. And I mean, there was people selling holidays, or there was people selling beds, as in the beds you sleep in. And that, to me, just didn't sit right at a, a gardening show. If I was running it, everything would have to be gardening-related, in my opinion. Um, Chelsea expenses. It, Chelsea is expensive, but worth going once. Sorry, I'm just hearing some, some noise going on outside, but nothing to work to it. Um, Kerry says, went to Hampton Court many, many years ago, but as my ex helped to set up a garden there, so got free tickets. Yeah, yeah, free tickets always make it much nicer. Would love a veg show. That would be awesome, says Kerry. Yeah, I, I if I could afford to set up a vegetable show, I would do it. Um, I can't afford it, I'll be honest. And there's a lot of things, a lot of work that would have to go into it to make it even possible. But it's something I think we we, we should try and get going. This year, we put vegetables into our show at Malvern. We got marked down. The judges' comments were not enough colour, says Stuart. With the... <sighs> this annoys me. This really annoys me at the moment. reason that... <laughs> I'm going to get, I'm, I'm keeping myself a little bit calmer. This annoys me because they're all about colour. And with so many people not being able to afford to feed themselves this year, I think, don't get me wrong, I understand colour is important, but actually showing what you can do with vegetables should be very, very important, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Um, Chinny Kate says, we had a great show, Silent Gardeners Fair in Hampshire, which seemed to be mostly edibles. Sadly, didn't happen last year. Not sure it will happen this year. Um, yeah, um, let me know if that does go ahead, because that's one that, if I'm not on call, I should be able to get to. I think it was you who, if I remember correctly, Chinny Kate, you mentioned another one that was in Chichester last year, which I couldn't get to either. But uh, let us... It'd be good to good to go to a few more shows. 
Ian says, I need to see if they're doing a potato day in Petersfield as it was good to get the tatties. It was on in February. Yeah, I think they are. I know the uh, the one in Brighton, the um, uh, CD Sunday. That's the word I'm looking for. CD Sunday is on in Brighton next year, and it's back to how it used to be with talks going on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, I'm sure potato days will be happening. The Fisherman. I love the cold and frost studs on the guard. No harm. Much better than the constant rain we get in Wales these days. Yeah, and the cold frost is it does have a certain appeal. Uh, I agree. Chili Kate, and I fancy visiting the Finch show this year too. Yeah, I will. I'll tell you what I'll do. I will scour the internet to see if there are any veg shows going on over the next couple of weeks. That's when I look at it on the internet for, for shows going on in 2023. Um, and we'll. we'll, we'll find out what is going on and, and come back to that that was a few years ago Stuart rules have changed since and turbo stream agreed again dig well I'm not quite sure what's going on there there was uh, sometimes I, I don't think I see every single comment now I did promise you one more video from turbo stream should we have a look at this one this has been a collection of photos he's taken throughout his year on his plot and pop together to create this little video. Let's have a look at this. There we go. What a lovely collection of photos. I so this one photo that popped up was a group of uh, likely lads, wasn't it? That was a good day. That was a Gardener's World day for you. Uh, if you spotted the photo I'm talking about, we all went up at Gardener's World. Lovely, lovely video turbo stream. Um, I think next year, what I really want us all to do, and uh, I know a few of you have been doing this, is that like, either on a weekly or monthly basis, we take a photo from our of our plot that we can stitch together like that and just show the progress right throughout the year. I think that will make a really interesting video for next year. If anybody's on board with that, then please do. And I will be doing it myself. I'm going to start on the, uh, the first of every month. I'm just going to take one single photo in exactly the same place and go from there and see how it turns out. Um, right. Well, 
is everybody saying? Ian says, I don't think I could be seen on a seedy Sunday in Brighton. Eh, it's a good show. It's a good show. It's a seed swap, so it's a good one. Uh, excuse me. Stuart, I think this is. It should be about how the plants are grown. It shows. Excuse me. Not the colours. Having done six, seven show guns, we've been pot off growing veg in show guns. I, I personally think that Guns should be whatever the people want it to be. Um, and the veg guns, I think there should be more emphasis on veg guns at the moment with the cost of living crisis because there are people who are struggling and uh, it's very much what we want to help them with. Jenny says, I went to a great show at Bellevue Castle last year. Flowers and veg in one point. One, one meter by one meter guns and some three meter by one meter plots shows what can be done. Indeed, yeah, definitely does show what can be done. Chili Phil says, the garden show at Stansted is the one we went to Hampshire this year. That's the one I was thinking of. Yes, that's the very one I was thinking of. Um, and what was it like, that one? Let us know. Ian says, sorry, Rich, missed 20 minutes trying to get a car open. Battery flat and can only open the driver's door. I had to crawl in through to get the power bank, but that's flat too. Cold weather. It's the cold weather that kills them, I'm afraid to say. Chili Kate, the National Veg Society has a show as in competition in Hampshire, although I want flavour overlooks myself. I would love to see that. I'm with you on that, actually. What well, We've got a, um, a, a local uh, town show. And yes, they judge your carrots on the best looking carrots or your sprouts, or not sprouts, potatoes on the best looking potatoes. It should be about how they taste. I think that is something they always miss out on. We don't grow veg to look at. We grow it for flavour, um, to eat. <laughs> it just seems crazy to me. Uh, Ian says, lovely plot and a fox too. Yeah, lovely, lovely indeed. Um, Stuart says, love the video. The music was good as well. Um, he says, well done at Digwell, but it was Turbo Stream, not Digwell. Um, great looking plug there. <laughs> yeah. I hope you can get there again in 2023, Adrian, at Turbo Stream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which plug are you talking about was a good looking one? Uh, the one in the middle, I think. Um, Digwell says, I have a great supplier for sp spuds, but I cannot post a link. £2.20 per kilo and good postage rates. Well, I would not use them otherwise. Give me a message if you want the link. Digwell, can you send that link to me? That would be great. And I'll um, I'll, I'll, I'll figure a way that I can post it. It'd probably be okay on Facebook, just not on YouTube. I don't think they said it. Uh, the music was from the YouTube library, so you should get a copyright strike. Thank you very much. I should say, yeah, I've got to be careful about the music because it's it can get that. Uh, Skinny Jean Gardner has joined. Hello, my friend. Hello. Yes, photos each week. Can we call it plot or not? <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah. Happy to catch a final 20 minutes. Lovely to see you, my friend. Anne says, beautiful. Indeed. Anna Jones says, great video. Yeah. And Turbo Stream, a pity you had to rush off Digwell. Wanted a bit, bit more time to chat. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's just the way it goes sometimes. Nicola says, often show gardens have plants in them that are not incorrect seasonal plants that won't thrive in the same conditions so they are not reality that is true that is very very true um this is the trouble i think when we talked about having veg in a show garden trying to get the cabbage in the middle of early spring or the middle of summer ain't quite gonna go, go gonna work and our autumn is probably the best time but then we're busy harvesting it's it's difficult it's very difficult to get the show at the right time Chili Cake says Stansted Park was huge. Lots of edibles, lots of non-edibles, and lots of non-gardening related to. I enjoyed it, but don't have much to compare to. Um, I'll have to see if it's on next year and if it's worth if it's worth going to, we'll, we'll try and go to that. This I think this should be marked. This I think this should not be marked down, not veg. Um, this I think this should be marked down. I think are you talking about colors or what i don't know uh i agree with Stuart. in my cookery classes if a ju judge does not like pepper in her sausage rolls then you are marked down yeah i, I totally agree i mean flavor is obviously down to the personal choice of as well but yeah yeah 
We could do a veg army show. Honestly, showing over pictures of video sharing on a Sunday live. That could be a way through, actually, couldn't it? We'd do a veg army show. That could work. That could work. Uh, Digma says, I post it on YouTube. It's just cannot post links here. Okay. I'm not sure why that happens. It lets me post links. And so I see Jenny says, yes, please dig well. Uh, Digma says, link sent. Yep, I've got it. So Veg and Shogun should be whatever it would usually look like at the time of year, not bought on early. This is a discussion we've had, actually. Um, you know, Veg shows are obviously there to show off the best. And, and let's face it. Some of these show gardens are unrealistic to the average gardener. They've either got massive space or don't have kids and dogs and things like that, that the garden is very, very much, well, it's very much unrealistic. And I know somebody who did a veg, who did a show garden, sorry, I think it cost them something like £60,000 for one weekend. £60,000 on that one garden for the weekend and it all just got thrown in a bin afterwards. Some people do give away the plants, but there was a lot of waste that goes on it. It's really, really uh, quite wasteful in some ways. That's why I would sooner have veg gardens and the veg gets given away at the end. Uh, Kerry says, not heard of Stansted Park. Where is it? What time of year is it on? Uh, Stansted Park is sort of down near Chichester in Hampshire, West Sussex border if i remember correctly roughly um when is it on is it may may june something like that um it's run by there's a group who do several shows throughout the year um it's run by those it's quite it's I, I, i've been to some of their shows and they're pretty good jenny says i like the covid chelsea as it was all seasonal i agree but they had to work with what was in season as nothing has been ordered and grown as lockdown yeah, yeah. And Toby Stream says we should all send in pics of our harvests each week. Yeah, that's a good idea as well. The harvest fit photos. That would be good. That would be very good, actually. Um, more work for me. I want to see if I can get this link to everybody. Um, so it's www. These are the. This is a link for the seed potatoes that Digwell was talking about. It's www www.bridgeendgardencenter.co.uk slash product for uh, no, uh, middle school category slash seed middle school potatoes slash. Uh, Bridge End Garden Centre is where you want to go. <laughs> Ooh, making a bit of noise there, apologies. Uh, but Bridge End Garden Centre is where he uh, dig well get, recommends to get potatoes from. Nicholas says, also unrealistic in costs. Gardens do get sold from Chelsea, often over £100,000. It's a lot of money, £100,000. You know, these gardens do cost, and the hope is that these people are going to get work from it. Um, what I would say, unrealistic cost is, is possibly true, but on the other hand, people could be spending that much money. I, I've had a discussion with Lee, Skinny Jean Gardener, but when we sort of said the garden is another room to our house. And would you spend, I don't know, uh, well, 20 grand, shall we say, on a kitchen? Um, and I think that's quite a reasonable price, 20 grand a kitchen, 20 grand on a bathroom. I don't know. I'm thinking about it, I probably wouldn't spend that much money. But why would your garden be any different? It's a change of mind, change of mind. Turbo Stream says, our own online venture. I think that's what we'll do. I think that's what we'll do. We'll figure all the kinks out, but I think we can do our own venture. Yeah, we're going to do that. Stansted was in June. It's near to Chichester at Rowlands Castle. Yeah. Uh, Ian says, I live not far from Stansted show, but never been as working. Well, there's always time next year. Good idea. I do tend to pick what is needed when it is needed. Yeah, absolutely. The most I've ever spent on a show garden was around £200, and we saved every plant to take back to school, says Stuart. Now, Stuart has done a few of the school gardens, so... Um, £200 is quite, quite reasonable. Um, but like I say, I know some of the show guns, the big show guns, are in the hundreds of thousands. It's it's quite sickening in some ways. But 
it's marketing. It's it's done for a reason. Um, and it's easy for us to sit here and criticise it. It, I'm not criticising it. I don't want to criticise it. It's just obscene in some ways. I'm a bit jealous. You guys have all these garden shows. We have once a year fair. Maybe a spring garden show, which is strictly which is strictly retail displays. See, I disagree. When I pay to get into a show, what I don't want it to be is all about retail, because that's what's the point of going paying to get into a show for the retail. I want to pay to get into a show and get something for my money and be it the talks from the gardeners, the chance to um, see different gardens, etc., etc. Quite a huge list of things that we were talking about. Um, but as I said, I want to know what, uh, what, what, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'll come back to that. And Steve's dig has just said, Perhaps put a banner up, but that involves me typing it out while I'm talking, and I can't do two things at work. Uh, and I've completely lost my train of thought now. And he says, festive greetings, Richard, and viewers. Sadly, all veg for Christmas are brought, but they are from Les, a local farmer just outside Shearborn. Are you doing a show on Christmas weekend? We are doing live next Sunday at 6, as always, um, and we're doing a Christmas quiz next Sunday. I'm looking forward to it, actually. It's going to be a lot of fun. Digwell, just a quick phone snap as you harvest stuff would suffice, I think. Talking about this. Uh, sort the house, spend it all in the garden. That's exactly what I would do. Unfortunately, Amanda wouldn't quite agree with me sometimes, but I would definitely sod the house and spend it on the garden. I did think that Gardener's World was more about retail, but I guess that pays the bill. There is an element of that. I'll give you that at Gardener's World. There is quite a few retail, but there's also quite a few gardens to go and have a look at, quite a few um, displays. I think sometimes the flower displays that are get a bit lost because they're inside the marquee amongst all the retails, and the retails also have to have displays on as well. So I think they sometimes get lost. Um but it is it's good to worth it. Rebecca, and it's exactly what it says, show garden. Just for us to look at and see the show. It's not real life, but lovely to see and dream. That's exactly what I was trying to trying to get my head um to com compute and say. Uh, it is a show garden, it's not a, a real garden as such. Um it's for us to go and look at and see what's going on um it, to get ideas from it is not a real life garden that being said you know when it comes to spending money on a garden we know that in the uk we don't spend a lot of money on our gardens in reality we try and do everything on the cheap because you know, we're tight there used to be a trade show that was called the grow self show when i went they had a potter machine called the plonker I think that show still goes on, but I'm not sure. Um, Digwell says to Rebecca, exacto mundo, just don't get stuck in. I agree, I agree. Uh, uh, sod the family too, he says as well. Sod the family too. So, yeah, well, Steve messaged me just now and he said put a banner up for that um, – uh website he said for seed potatoes unfortunately i'm not very good at typing things out while i'm talking to you guys and i always worry that if i'm i'm not talking to you guys it's a bit like uh saying nothing what i need to do and i can do this with the system is get a producer somebody that can sit there and type all these things out and bring up the web pages as while i while we're discussing these things and i don't have to worry about it so much that's something we're looking into i've just got to train if amanda can do it but she usually talks to her dad on a Sunday, so it's difficult, but we've got to train her how to do it. Uh, Toby Stream says, the small displays at Garden's Well got lost because they were by a bank where everyone was sitting in the sun. I missed most of them. I wouldn't say they got lost. I think they, uh, they were there. I think, I, th I think it's one of those things that there's so much to see at Garden's Well that everything just becomes a little bit lost bridge end garden center for the potatoes that was it uh nicola says i'm with you jenny can only have so much to spend wish money don't grow on trees i um, totally agree i totally agree it's all about spending within your limits and and what have you wouldn't that be amazing nicola i agree i agree it's all about spending within your limits of course um and as i say i know 
here in the UK, we're not very good at spending money on our gardens. And that comes from trade people who are looking to make money from people spending money on their gardens, of course. But it is, it is true. Any potato recommendations, heritage ones? I fancy growing some purple ones, etc. Um, well, we've got about four minutes. So, um, Digwell says, poke the link up next week. I'll do that next week. That's a good idea. Uh, heritage ones. I fancy growing some purple ones. So potato recommendations, please, for the last few minutes. Nicholas says, I volunteered at CD Sunday. Busy fun day. May go to next year and do the same. Long drive, but a good day all round. Yeah, I agree. I do totally agree. Uh, Ellie is looking forward to the Christmas show. Nice one. No, it's Christmas quiz. We're doing it next Sunday at six. It's going to be a lot of fun. And there's a few people who um, are on their own Christmas day. So we're going to have them coming along and join in. Um, right. Potato recommendations. So purple ones. As one, it's a Scottish variety. And I can't remember what it's called. It's got royal something or queen something. Um Digwell says Red Duke of York is a good one. I'm a big lover of the King Edward. I know they're not exactly the most exciting, but King Edward is is one of my favourite. Uh, Stuart says Merry Christmas to everyone in the Veg Army group. See you all in the new year. P.S. Sorry, I will be missing next week. Uh, you know, if people have got their own thing to do on Christmas dinner, Christmas Day, sorry, that is completely understandable. So uh, there will be no no problem with that, but um, yeah. Uh, Bally Singh Vitabella, great flavor and blight resistant. There we go. Toby Stream says, Merry Christmas, everyone, for next week. I will see you all the week after. Nicholas says, Jenny, I did blue salad ones, which were purple, but when cooked, blue. I wouldn't grow purple blue again, weird color when cooked. I did grow it. I can't remember. They were a purple variety. Purple Majesty. That's it. Purple Majesty. I knew it would come to me if I thought on it for long enough. Um, they were quite good. I was quite impressed with those. Um, is Getting hold of them can be the difficult one. One of my favourite potatoes, and it's sort of a heritage, is Home Guard. Uh, it's from World War II. It's a very, excuse me, a very good variety. I've seen it grow through snow. So I'm a big lover of potatoes uh, of that variety i tell you what this is going to be a subject we're going to have to come back to your favorite seed potatoes or favorite variety of potatoes to buy uh, that could be something we'll do probably end of january january sometime and how does that sound dig well purple majesty satins uh i agree nicola my blue potatoes once cooked once cooked looked kind of gray uh, Jenny said, thank you very much. Digwell Branston Purple, another good purple variety. Um, yeah, I think that's given us plenty of ideas. We will come back to this very subject in January about what seed potatoes to grow. I will make a note of that as soon as I, I can. I think it's a great idea and uh, something we can very much look forward to doing. Um, so get your thinking caps on for that subject when we do it. Um, I'm going to take off the, the 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 overlay there, and what have we got? Uh, Purple Viking says Digwell. Uh, Jenny says, "Wishing you all a wonderful Christmas and productive Veg Field 2023." Indeed. So we're coming up to the end of this show. Uh, next Sunday we will be live at six o'clock. It's the the Christmas pub quiz. It's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to seeing you all, or who can make it, I should say. Um, got a lot of things worked out. I'm looking forward to it. I've got to say, um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I hope to see you there. Obviously, the Sunday after will be New Year's Day. Again, we are going live, and on that, I want to find out what your New Year's resolutions, what your plans are for 2023 and what you're going to be trying. And I want to discuss a bit more about some of the competitions or things that we're going to be testing out throughout 2023. So, yeah, I hope everyone out there, if I don't see you next Sunday, but I hope everyone out there has a really good Christmas day. You enjoy your vegetables that you've grown. Um, you enjoy spending time with your family or whatever you may be doing. And I uh, hope Santa spoils you all as well. Um, as it's the Christmas day, I've got to say, we'll, we'll count this as the last one on the seas of this year. I've got to say, thanks so much, everybody who has been coming every weekend this year. I genuinely cannot believe you keep coming back, um, in all honesty. 
uh, it's so great to see you all. It really does uh, make me so happy to see you coming back. Um, uh, and it's such a such great thing. I really enjoy doing these live shows. 2022 has just been fantastic for doing it. 2023, we're going to try and up the game a little, try and get it a bit more interactive. But it's all going to be fun. Anyway, I'm, I'm waffling on a bit. But I, th I just want to thank everybody for joining me this year helping me out and keeping this going, keeping me motivated. 2023 is going to be better, but before then, have a great Christmas. Right, you take care, guys, um, and we will see you again in the next time.